usual make the walk for being who you want to be. Pulling my hotel when I get a little far out there. That happens at least twice a month. Amen. <laughs> um, just saying, you know, you know. Oh, shout out to my husband sitting in the back. I'm going around Washington. What's happening? reactions, the passions, so that universal principles 
reason and knowledge prevail to determine one's action. It also says wisdom is also the comprehension of what is true coupled with optimum judgment. But the one that I like, it says wisdom is also discernment or insight. Are you smart enough to use wisdom? Did you all know that all smart people, baby brother, don't have wisdom? There are some smart folks on the planet. I know a few, related to a few. Went to school with a few, worked with a few, yeah, worked for a few. There are some educated fools in the building. We have people who are wisdomless, educated ignorance is what we would call it. Knowledge right, comes from books. You go to school, I'm saying all the knowledge you want to. You go all the way, graduate from eighth grade, well first graduate from kindergarten, then graduate from eighth grade, then graduate from high school, then graduate from college, then college again, then college again. You can wallpaper your house, mama Benita, with degrees, and still not have wisdom. That's knowledge. But wisdom, Discern, insight, is God given. So you didn't have to go to school today in your life and still be wise. Back in the day, some of us have grandmothers and great grandmothers who have sixth grade educations, but are some of the wisest people you ever met. Wisdom, talking about wisdom, wisdom. Did you know that wisdom is a benefit of being a Christian? As a Christian, you walked up the aisle when they said, is there one? When they were saying, come to Jesus. You know when you walk down the aisle, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I'm tired, I'm tired. And you told the pastor, yes. And you got doused with the water, sprinkled with the water, whatever they threw the water on you, however they did it. You became available for Christian benefits. One of them is wisdom. The Bible tells us if you ask for it, God will give it to you. There are benefits to being a king's kid. There are certain things that are available to us as Christians just for having a relationship with the Creator. One of these benefits, wisdom. It's very often that we get saved, we finish the foundations of faith class, and the only thing that stays in our minds is that our God is the owner of cattle on a thousand hills. You all heard that? And then we can ask Him for anything we need. Knock, and then open the door. Ask. You'll get it, get it. So we began to ask him for the material things. Our quick, we asked him for a car. Bria, we asked him for clothes. Chris, we asked him for money. We asked him for a job from Shannon. Sometimes we asked him for a new boo. Sometimes we asked him for new kids. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Not realizing that if we ask for one thing, it will provide the means for us to have all that we need and then some. We need wisdom in every single area of our lives. As husbands, as wives, as servants, ministers need wisdom. Amen? James 1 and 5 tells us to ask if we lack wisdom and it will be given to us. So the first step, as with anything, is knowing that you are not wise enough to do this thing by yourself. You cannot live this life by yourself. You need wisdom. There's nothing like a smart folk. You know, the people who think they are wise, but as my grandmother would say, they really know it's a box of rocks. These are people who will tell, there are people who will tell you that as you get older, you get wiser. And how many of you all know that is not necessarily true because I know some old fools. Amen? Old but no wisdom. Wisdom can't be talked about unless the wisest man that ever lived is discussed. King Solomon. He was wise in every area except for dealing with relationships. How many of you know someone who has a brilliant business mind but their personal relationships are jacked up? Everything is wonderful in the corporate world, but all hell is breaking loose on the home front. That was King Solomon. Let's read 2 Chronicles 
first chapter, 6 through the 12th verse, I'm going to read from the message. Amen? Solomon worshipped God at the bronze altar in front of the tent of meeting. He sacrificed a thousand whole burnt offerings on it. That night God appeared to Solomon and said, well, what do you want from me? Ask. Solomon answered, you were extravagantly generous with David, my father, and now you have made me king in his place. Establish, God, the words you spoke to my father, for you've given me a staggering task, ruling this mob of people. Yes, give me wisdom and knowledge as I come and go among this people, for who on his own is capable of leading these, your glorious people? God answered Solomon, this is what has come out of your heart. You didn't grasp for money, wealth, fame, and the doom of your enemies. You didn't even ask for a long life. You've asked for wisdom and knowledge so you can govern well my people over whom I made you king. Because of this, you get what you ask for. Wisdom and knowledge. And I'm presenting you with the rest. Ah, you see that? I'm presenting you with the rest as a bonus. Money, wealth, and fame beyond anything the kings before or after you have or will have. The word of God for the people of God. Amen? I want you to notice what Solomon asked for. Mama Jermaine, Solomon asked for wisdom. Now, as I grow in ministry, this passage is quickly becoming one of my favorites because as I grow and God begins to open doors for me to move in and out among different types of people, I know that I need wisdom to be able to do the right thing at the right time, say the right thing at the right time, wear the right thing at the right time. I need to know how to deal with different people on different levels because everybody is not the same. You need wisdom to know that church mentality is not going to suffice. That means it's not going to work when you're living this life. That's not going to work alone. You can't be in business with the president of a Fortune 500 company and he walks in and says, good morning. And you say, oh, Evo, I'm blessed in the Lord. How are you? I'm blessed, too blessed to be stressed that I've had a favor in Jesus' name. To the president of a Fortune 500 company, that's not using wisdom. Wisdom will tell you what to say and when to say it. Wisdom will tell you what to wear and when to wear it. You don't show up at the business meeting with your seat with church suit on, with matching hat. You don't show up at church with booty shorts and a hall top. Wisdom. God was so impressed at what Solomon didn't ask for, ask for. Material things, riches, to kill his enemies. He told Solomon, because you didn't ask for them, and you asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you that and everything else that you didn't ask for. Did you know that if you ask God for wisdom, you can go further, you can acquire more, you can do more than you could ever do on your own? Being smart and stupid at the same time is the pits. But it also happens when wisdom is not present. So the question that is asked is, how did Solomon know how to ask for wisdom? Proverbs 4, 3 and 9 says, when I was at a boy at my father's knee, the pride and joy of my mother, he would sit me down and drill me and say, take this to heart, do what I tell you, live, sell everything, and buy wisdom. Forage for understanding. Don't forget one word. Don't deviate an inch. Never walk away from wisdom. She guards your life. Love her. She keeps an eye on you. Above all and before all, do this. Get wisdom. Write this at the top of your list. Get understanding. Throw your arms around her. Believe me, you won't regret it. Never let her go. She'll make your life glorious. She'll garland your life with grace and festoon your days with beauty. Solomon learned from his father. Get some wisdom and he would live. If you don't get anything else out of this message today, get this. With wisdom, you will survive. Not money, wisdom. You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have wisdom, you will soon be broke and or miserable. Get some wisdom. So when Solomon asked for this wisdom, he it was because he realized he didn't have it. The worst thing for you to do is think you have wisdom and you really don't. So even if you think you have wisdom, just ask God for a little more just to be sure. There's too much going on in this world. Too much is happening right now for the people of God not to ask 
for and have wisdom. People are crazy. And to deal with the world, but wisdom is required so that you will know how to ensure self-maintenance. You need wisdom to deal with you. You need wisdom to deal with yourself. Chris, if you desire to be elevated in ministry, you need wisdom. If you're going to work with and lead God's people, Mom, if you're going to stand before them, if you're going to be an example, if you're going to deal with the saints on any level, wisdom is necessary. Wisdom keeps you from choking somebody until they see the light. Amen? Yeah. That's wisdom. You need wisdom to deal with the times you're accused of doing something you didn't do, but you can't defend yourself. You need wisdom to deal with the times that you are cussed out and you can't cuss back. You need wisdom to deal with the times where people make an assumption about your lifestyle, but yet you can't say anything because the Holy Ghost has a thousand pound anvil on your tongue. Wisdom will make your journey to destiny easier. We can't afford to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Wisdom lets you learn from your previous mistakes so they're not repeated. The wisdom of God is necessary. Second Chronicles chapter 9 says, The Queen of Sheba heard of Solomon's reputation and came to Jerusalem to put his reputation to the test, asking all the tough questions. She made a showy entrance, an impressive retinue of attendants and camels loaded with perfume and much gold and precious stones. She emptied her heart to Solomon, talking over everything she cared about. And Solomon answered everything she put to him. Nothing got past Solomon. When the Queen of Sheba experienced for herself Solomon's wisdom and saw with her own eyes the palace he had built, the mills that were served, the impressive, impressive away, array of court officials, the sharply dressed waiters, the cup bearers, and then the elaborate worship, extravagant with whole burnt offerings and the temple of God, it all took her breath away. She said to the king, it's all true. Your reputation for accomplishment and wisdom that reached all the way to my country is confirmed. I wouldn't believe if I hadn't seen it for myself. They didn't exaggerate. Such wisdom and elegance, far more than I ever could have imagined. Lucky the men and women who work for you, getting to be around you every day and hear your wise words firsthand. And blessed be your God who has taken such a liking to you, making you king, clearly, God's love for Israel is behind this, making you king to keep a just order and nurture God's pleasing people. The Queen of Sheba came to visit Solomon when she heard about his wisdom. So when she got there, she marveled, but she was in awe at the wisdom when it came out of his mouth. She marveled even more when she saw the wisdom in his lifestyle. Now this is the thing, how does one portray, exude wisdom so that you can see it. How can you see wisdom in somebody's lifestyle? Spirit, know this. There is truth in the saying that actions speak louder than words. People should be able to look at your life without you even saying a word and see God's hand on your life. The wisdom in the way you lead your life and handle your affairs should be evident. When the queen got to Solomon's palace, she was in awe. She walked around, this is nice. She knew that God had blessed him. And she knew that only through God's wisdom and power could something of this magnitude be completed. Remember, Solomon didn't ask for the money. He asked for wisdom. God gave him the wealth as an added bonus. Our lifestyle should be such that when people look at us and what we have and what we are doing, they know we didn't do it on our own. Amen. That we must have had some help from God. That is part of our lives being a testimony. The queen saw Solomon's accomplishments. She knew that it was God's hand on his life. Some of us try and sit back with our chest out and try and take the credit for what God has done. Please know that everybody knows that you are not that smart. Stop being so arrogant and thank God for his wisdom that he imparted to you. Because really, to be honest, you don't have that many connections. You really don't fall out of control like that. You had some help from God. He gave you wisdom to obtain everything that you have that keeps you looking so flat. Amen? Amen. So the queen came in. She sat down at Solomon's table. 
She saw the food being brought to him. She saw his diet. She saw what he consumed. Now know this, a person that is truly walking in wisdom watches what they ingest. They watch what they eat. They watch what they swallow. A wise person doesn't have time to swallow foolishness. A wise person doesn't have time to swallow stupidity. A wise person doesn't have time to swallow ignorance. They stop it because it doesn't go with their diet. See, I don't know about you, but I'm getting to a place now where I don't have time to consume anything that's going to conflict with my walk. Because I feel like I've come too far for you to come and leave with the dish of foolishness. The last thing you want when you are on your walk with Christ is for, is for somebody to come to you with some deep fried foolishness, some sauteed stupidity. That's the last thing that you need. Gossip, mm -mm, I don't ingest that. Imagine other people's business, mm -mm, that's not part of my diet. Wisdom helps you tell people when they come to you with the foolery, no thank you. That's what Lauren does. When Lauren knows that she's about to get in trouble, she goes, you said, Lauren, sit down. I don't want to sit down. Lauren, sit down. I don't want to sit down. Lauren, do you want to spank it? No thank you. <laughs> and then it takes off running. That's what you do when somebody comes to you with a plate full of gossip or a plate full of foolishness or a plate full of somebody else's business, Shonda, because you look at them and go, no thank you, and take off running. How many of you all have seen uh, Toy Story? My favorite line in the whole story is when Woody looks at the horse and goes, run like the wind, bullseye, and the horse starts running like this. And that's what you do when somebody comes to you with some foolishness. Run like the wind, bullseye, and keep running. You don't have time on your walk with Christ for foolishness to be ingested. Because then your spiritual stomach starts to hurt. So then you have to start all over again because now you got to get well from the foolishness that somebody gave you. Let's use wisdom. What's the word for today? Wisdom. It takes a wise person to mind their own business. A wise person. Let me say that again. This is for the, the Facebookers and the Tweeters and the Instagrammers and the Vine users. Did y'all want a MySpace was coming back? And the future MySpace users. It takes a wise person to mind their own business. When somebody posts foolishness on your wall, pay attention to the wisdom. Unfriend them. If you have a person that's a friend of yours on social media and all they put up is foolery, unfriend them. That's something you don't need to ingest. The word for the day is? So the queen sat at the table and saw the people sitting and standing around Solomon. She saw the officials sitting at the table. Okay, let me paint the picture for you. How many of y'all say you're coming to America? Remember, yes, <laughs> remember the beginning? So remember after he got washed up and all of that, and then he came in and he walked in and then the people with the rose petals and he, good morning, your highness, good morning, your highness, good morning, your majesty, good morning, your majesty. And then he gets to the table, he's dressed in his little polo shirt, with his little cat, his little uh, riding capris and boots, and he sits down, and then every time, notice, he came to sit, his, the rose pet, petal bearers were like this, and the officials were standing there like this. That's what the Queen of Sheba saw when she went to Solomon's palace and she sat in his dining room. She saw the rose petal bearers. She saw the officials. And she looked and she was in awe. When people who have disorder in their situation come to your house and see order, that's how they look. They see order. They're in awe. Because let me tell you this. Well, family, you can be real, right? The knock on black folks is that we keep him in our house. The knock on black folks is that you keep hell in your church. The knock on black folks is that you keep hell in your relationships. That's why we can't ever get anywhere as a people, because we disorderly. Let people come to your house and find order. That's a sign of 
wisdom. Amen? Amen. That wasn't even in the message. I just gave y'all that one for free. Usually I charge you for it, but today I didn't. She saw the order that Solomon used to run his kingdom. A wise person runs their lives with order. If you're going anywhere in God, order has to be used. Your lifestyle can't be a wreck. People in leadership, you can't be a mess. Or as the young folks call it, you can't be all ratchet and a mess and think that God is going to bless you. God does not bless mess. You can't misuse your own money and think God is going to trust you to make business decisions on behalf of his people. You can't have a raggedy lifestyle and think God is going to bless it and increase it and do whatever it is you are trying to do. God is a God of decency and order. You have to learn to pay your own before God will put you in charge of somebody else's money. God is taking some of you to greatness, but before you can get there, Brianna, you have to learn how to handle your affairs. So right now, he's giving you that time to do that. You have to be able to be trusted with your own business before God lets you handle God's business. Wisdom brings order into all aspects of your life, not just the finances. Wisdom brings order to your household, your marriage, your friends, your jobs, your relationships. Ask God for forgiveness to provide order. Let me tell you something. The church is at the forefront of throwing things together in a haphazard way. And then we have the nerve to ask God to validate. God doesn't validate messages in the church either. We throw together programs in five minutes. Then we start our programs two hours late. Then we come to church three hours late. Then we want God to be in the midst. Oh God, be in the midst. Oh God, we welcome you here. That's not wisdom. We are preparing for the king. We are building God's kingdom. We are doing things for the creator of the universe. There has to be order. What if God was late meeting your needs? Everybody's shoulder not making your tears. The operative word today, wisdom. 
wisdom. Have wisdom in your friend choices. Now, there is a difference between being my friend on Facebook and being my friend for real. Facebook will tell you that I got about 500 something friends. Janice has a hot set and one is on the fence, so we'll just say six and a half. Wisdom. Be smart in your choices. Be like Solomon in that cup bearer. Make sure that you are not letting everybody be privy to your household. Everybody don't need to come home. That's wisdom. You ask me if you're not close to me, and you ask me where I live in Bronzeville, and then I'm walking away before you ask me for my real address. All you need to know is I'm in Bronzeville. Yeah, we should get together. Okay, we can meet. Let me let you know where the Starbucks is close to my house, and we're all here to sit down there. Everybody's not allowed in my home. Because that's where, if I can't be vulnerable anyplace else, I can be vulnerable in my home. Everybody is not allowed in my home. I had to check on a young lady one day. She came over, and she was walking around, and, oh, this is just so nice. Wait a minute, boo. Your access is only restricted to the living room. You don't just walk around my house, I'm a living young. That's wisdom. When you invite people in, give certain folks restrictions. Everybody should know where everything is. Number one, so they can go out and tell. Number two, they hate on you because you got it and they don't. Use wisdom in your associations. My husband has a core group of fellas in the, what, 12, 13 years that we've been together. A core group. And outside that core group, none of the rest know where he lives. And he tell you, he and them go back like car seats. But that doesn't mean they know where he lives. Be wise with your home. Be wise with your associations. Be wise with your friendships. What's the word for today? Yes. Amen. So she watched him with the cup bear. Single people. Ah. Discerning wisdom will help you not to get caught up in the swag level of whoever your boo is at the moment. Okay, hold on. Because some of the people don't know what the swag is. Yep, okay, everybody that knows swag level, raise your hand. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Now, for those of you who don't know, do not get caught up in what they have, and their appearance, and what they have on, and the car that they drive. Don't get caught up in the swag level. He could be fine as wine and a fool. Because uh, Tina Turner thought Ike Turner was cute before he kicked her. I'm quite sure Whitney thought Bobby was fine. And then here we go. Oops. Wisdom in your associations. See whether or not this person has your best interest at heart. Young ladies, single ladies, I hope single ladies. A hamburger for dinner or a pair of Jordans does not mean he's worth giving your body to. If that joker takes you to McDonald's, tell him thank you, sip on your sweet tea and go back to the house. Your body is not worth a pair of shoes. Now, I know everybody in this is saved and delivered and they are not uh, having sex anyway because y'all know that that's a sin and you're supposed to wait until you get married before you give any, your body to anybody anyway. Amen. But let me just tell you so you can tell the people who are not paying attention to that rule. Stop giving your body away for a, a bag of flaming hot and a cute outfit from Dots. <laughs> Spare no attention to that. Stop giving your body away because he took you to the Nike outlet over there on Cottage Grove and bought you some water. Or took you to the trunk of some booster's car and got you some for the love. Your body is worth more than that. Use wisdom. Single women of all ages are killing me these days by offering their bodies up to the first person that pays them some attention and tells them that they look cute. Let me tell you what you invest in. Some mirrors all around your house. Let me tell you what Sister Hearn said. Remember Sister Hearn? Let me tell you what my great grandmother told me. When a Negro tell you you fat, nine times out of ten he lying because you wasn't cute that day anyway. You know how you look when you walk out. He's sitting there talking about some 
case, you know you look at high no jeans. And you walk out the house, you know your jeans dirty because you just put them on to go to the store. They got the grease stains in them. You got on run over the shoes and a toe up t-shirt. Your hair all over your head. But you sit up here and say, <laughs> What's the word for today? Wisdom. That if you cannot afford to invest in some mirrors all over your house, everybody holds your phone up and it's not that. You got to phone out.
The cupbearer will be right here. So when they when they pass the cup, the cupbearer said, wait a minute, don't drink that Pepsi yet. It may be poison. So then the cupbearer would drink. So if it was poison, oops, there goes the cupbearer. Get it to the county, because it's about to be over. Let wisdom be the cup bearer in your life. Amen? Have some smarts. Get yourself a cup bearer. Some wisdom. Discerning wisdom. It will tell you who's trying to poison you. Who's trying to squash your spirit. Who's trying to kill your calling. Who's trying to get at that anointing that God gives you. Finally, the queen saw the way Solomon got up from the table and began to worship. Let me tell you what happened. The Bible says, when the queen saw Solomon get up from the table, baby sister, and start worshiping, it took her breath away when she passed out. That's what the Bible said. She was so overcome with his worship that she just passed out. Now, that's the way your lifestyle should be. That people should be so overcome with the God in you that they pass out under the anointing that's on your life. They should be so overcome with the anointing that you have and that you care that the devil in them should die. And they should crave some of that wisdom that you have. Many of us need to have worship wisdom. We need to stop being so arrogant in our thinking that we did this all by ourselves. Don't you hate when folks make it all about them? Stop talking about yourself and give credit where credit is due. The queen saw Solomon's worship. She saw that no matter how much he had, his worship was just like that of someone who didn't have half of what Solomon had. Come here, Brianna. Wisdom is at its best when it is paired with humility and worship. You know you didn't do this by yourself. You know you did. And for that, you give God worship. Let me show you what worship is. What true overcome, what true worship is.
Worship. Gotta be like Solomon. 